I'm MJ with iFixit, and today we got our curious little hands on the latest MacBook Air to do our very favorite thing, that's right, you guessed it, tear it down and reveal its deepest, darkest secrets. But before we reveal its unmentionables, let's talk about what we already know. The primary difference in these MacBook Airs is the upgraded processor. This revision is using a dual-core Intel i5 processor with the option of getting the i7 in the high-end 13-inch version. Performance benchmarks that have been popping up all over the web show that these MacBook Airs are matching and even outperforming some of the 2010 MacBook Pros, which is an impressive upgrade performance-wise. But upgraded performance is no indicator of repairability. And of course, in time-honored iFixit tradition, we aim to answer the question, just how repairable is this computer? Fresh out of the box, the first thing we noticed was the addition of an SD card slot and Thunderbolt, Apple's magical new port that seems to do everything. And luckily for us, the same pentalobe screws that were used in the previous generation of MacBook Air were holding the bottom case on, so accessing its insides was a cinch. Once the bottom case was off, everything looked surprisingly familiar. A massive and easily accessible battery, as well as removable SSD, both score points for us here at iFixit, but a big drawback is non-user serviceable RAM, which is gonna cost you an extra 200 bucks if you upgrade it from the get-go, which might be the best idea, considering once you've purchased it, you're stuck with it. Once we remove the battery and the SSD, we dug a bit deeper until we're able to remove the logic board, which looks pretty similar to previous iterations. The big difference here is Intel's i5 processor, which is credited with boosting this MacBook Air's performance, making it twice as fast as its predecessor. Once we got the whole thing disassembled, it was pretty clear that, like with previous generations of the MacBook Air, the bulk of the computer is made up of the logic board, which means that if something fails, you're looking at swapping the entire logic board versus a single less expensive component. That might not seem like a big deal right now, but it's something to consider if you're thinking of transitioning from a retired plastic MacBook or a MacBook Pro, both of which are far more upgradable and repairable. With our teardown complete and all of the MacBook Air's unmentionables laid bare for the world to see, we can get back to our original question. Just how repairable is the MacBook Air? Whenever we tear anything down, we give it a repairability score between 1 and 10, 1 being the least repairable and 10 being the most repairable. All things considered, we gave this version of the MacBook Air a repairability score of 4 out of 10. While the battery and SSD are removable, Pentalobe drivers are still a rarity in most folks' houses, making just opening up the computer a chore. And though you can remove the SSD, you can only replace it with another Apple SSD, unlike most computers where you can put in any brand hard drive that you want, so long as it's compatible. Non-user serviceable RAM might be a deal breaker for us, but if you're someone that doesn't fantasize about maxing out their RAM, it might be a non-issue. All things considered, this MacBook Air is definitely a step up, especially with the upgraded processor and the addition of Thunderbolt. <laughs> Though we are sad to see it replace the simple and serviceable plastic MacBook. She will be missed. For complete details and high resolution images, check out the MacBook Air teardown at ifixit.com. And to stay up to date with all of the latest teardowns and repair videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ifixit. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.